Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. Hey, I told y'all, man. I told y'all something's going on. A couple weeks ago, we did a video where Malik, I talked about Malik Scott and Deontay Water and how Malik Scott was saying, you know, Deontay Water is a big enough name to where if he doesn't, you know, I'm paraphrasing now, right, where he doesn't want to fight, you know, Andy Ruiz that, you know, doesn't necessarily have to and he can, you know, do something differently, right? And I remember sitting there thinking, how is Wilder going to sit there and just avoid fighting Ruiz because of the WBC ordered the elimination bout between Wilder and Ruiz. So how does Wilder just not fight Ruiz? Then I said, you know what? I remember they were talking about Usyk and fighting Usyk, and then now you got Tyson Fury and Usyk. They, you know, at the time, they, they they weren't able to sort things out. Now it looks like they could, Tyson Fury and Usyk could be fighting in the UK, but there's still an issue because Usyk side don't want to budge on the 50-50 split. Tyson Fury doesn't want to give them a 50-50 split. And I'm like, you know what, man? There is a chance. Wilder and Usyk still, there's still a chance they fight. Now, we know that's the fight that Wilder wants. Usyk wants to fight Wilder, but he also wants to be undisputed. But I just, I'm not sure what Usyk and his team are going to do. But his team said, just, you know, I read an article yesterday. They said they are steadfast on on on, on demanding a 50-50 split. They understand they're in the U, they'll be fighting in the UK. They understand Tyson Fury. They understand what he brings to the table. But you know they have all the belts. You know they have you know three of the belts. They actually have four, but they have uh, three of the belts that matter. And they're not budging. And I was like, oh boy, you know, because remember Malik Scott spent a lot of time with. Um, Alexander Usyk. You see, there's so much, so many different things that go on in this boxing world, man, you know. And when we talk about these politics and stuff like that, there's so much stuff that goes on behind the scenes. But what, what you guys are seeing here, you always hear me talk about the key decision makers, right? What we're seeing happening are those key decision makers who are sitting there behind the scenes. These guys are out here, man, moving pieces around. How does, how does, you guys tell me how Andy Ruiz goes into an IBF eliminator, right? When he's, when he's already been ordered for a WBC eliminator. And now, the, the, the thing about it with, with Andy Ruiz, to decide an interim, interim champion for the IBF, there's a damn mandated purse bid it's supposed to be taking place on February 28th. You know, I guess it's a good thing for Ruiz, but maybe it's a bad thing. Because I think Andy Ruiz beats Hergovic with no problem. But, but, I, but, I, but, but getting to that WBC title, I think Andy Ruiz should go I don't think he has a choice. He, he, he's going to purse bid, so Andy Ruiz is being forced this direction. And if I'm him, he he's, he really doesn't have a voice, man, because he, he's got to get back in the ring. He's got to get active. But I'm just trying to sit here and understand Ruiz going over here to fight this guy, Hergovic. Deontay Water is, you know, obviously frustrated in the breeze, you know, looking at other promoters. He wants the Usyk fight. You know, he doesn't want to take a step back. Malik Scott's gone on record and said that. They don't want to take a step back. And they don't mind fighting Ruiz, but they, I think they feel in their minds that that's a step back. But Andy Ruiz is not a step back. Andy Ruiz was a unified heavyweight champion. Deontay Wilder's never been a unified heavyweight champion. It doesn't matter what anyone has to say. The fact remains, Andy Ruiz, as far as his, his accolades in boxing... His accolades far outweighed Deontay Wilder's just for the fact that he became a unified uh, heavyweight champion. Wilder has not. Okay, so don't get me wrong. Wilder defended that WBC title for a long time. Don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about quality opponents. I'm not getting into that. I let I let everyone else do that. I, I'm just saying for me, 
These are the facts. But what, what exactly is, is Deontay Water going to do now? Because, you know, with Ruiz being the former IBF, WBA, and w, WBO champion, right? He's supposed to be going up against Water for the WBC Eliminator. And we know with all these reservations about the pay being offered by PBC and Water trying to fight in Ghana instead, you know, I, I don't know. Because to me, to me, Wilder Ruiz makes more sense than even Wilder Hergovic or Ruiz Hergovic. Like, I mean, when I'm looking at financially, legacy-wise, what the hell is the issue with coming up with an agreement? It's just like Andy Ruiz and Hergovic. Y'all got to go to purse bid? What's the issue? Why, why is there nobody getting behind that? Why can't they come to an agreement? Hergovic needs to understand, man. Hey, look, I know some of y'all make like Hergovic. I think Hergovic's a great talent, don't get me wrong, but he's nothing compared to Andy Ruiz. Now, that's just my opinion. I don't think he's nothing compared to Andy Ruiz. He should be grateful that Andy Ruiz has given him an opportunity just for Hergovic to get de to get Dimitrenkoed, whatever that guy's name that Andy Ruiz damn near killed uh, in the fight before he fought the first AJ fight. Dimitrenko, I think, was his last name. That's all that's going to happen here with Ruiz and Hergovic. Hergovic's going to get Dimitrenkoed. So he should be grateful he's getting an opportunity to step in there with a former unified heavyweight champion. Andy Ruiz will not lose to Hergovic. Then that puts Andy Ruiz in a pretty good position. He'll have that, He'll be the interim uh, a titleist, but I don't know. I'm just trying to figure things out, man. But Ruiz, man, you know... He, since he lost, he's been working hard to get his position back as, you know, I guess we could call him like a top-tiered heavyweight because he is, man. But we know that he's been out here, you know, kind of asking for fights and, and you know, almost almost begging to, to fight AJ. And, you know, and I think with Andrew Ruiz, you know, he kind of got spoiled. He, he saw what it's like to make real money. And, and and now I think I think he got spoiled fighting AJ making real money. Water got spoiled fighting Fury making real money. So now both of these guys are out here trying to find a way to get back to the mountaintop. But, you know, the way to do it is to go out here and fight. Now, I'm going to tell you what could be happening. I'm going to tell you what could be happening. Now, you tell me if, you, if I'm wrong. This could be Al Heyman saying, you know what? I'm not going to take my two fighters, my two heavyweights, and have them fight each other and have one lose. No, I'm going to break that up and have them go fight other fighters and have them win. That way I keep my two heavyweights winning and then on a path towards a championship instead of having one come break the other one down. Now, now the more I, see, this is what happens when you talk. You brainstorm. I just came up with that. That's honestly what I think is going on. Again, we talk about the key decision makers behind the scenes because – Nothing makes any sense right now. But you just can't make me believe Al Heyman will be okay with putting Ruiz and Water against each other for basically he's trying to rebuild both of them at the same time. That's what's happening here. And to have Water come in and just knock Ruiz out? No, nah, they're going to sit there and let Water fight whoever the hell he's going to fight. And maybe for a WBC eliminator, it may not be. Let Ruiz go to IBF route. And then they, that's exactly what I think is going on. But then again, I'm not sure. You know what I'm saying? We're just, we're just having a conversation. But to me, it's a curveball, man, to hear Andy Ruiz going to this per, purse bid for uh, this, this interim you know, IBF title. I just, I guess, Hergovic. It just, it just makes you wonder. But they're going to be having that purse bid on the 28th of February, which is coming right around the corner. But the whole situation, look, it's just, it's just, it's just confusing. And um, supposedly there were secret uh, talks between Wilder and Tyson Fury about a fourth fight between the two. Now, that's something that was put out into the, into the universe as well. Because Wilder and Fury know there's a lot of money in a fourth fight. Now, I don't know how true that is, but that's something that's being reported out here on one of these boxing pages. 
So I don't know. All the fights are good fights, interesting fights, but at the end of the day, we don't really know what's what, what's happening, and I don't think we're going to get an undisputed champion anytime soon. You know what I mean? But we just got to understand these organizations got some rules, and you know, it, it just makes you wonder what's going on. You look at the IBF and trying to go to purse bid. You know, they got a rule that says you know no purse bids can be called for interim champion bouts, but they're going for a purse bid for an interim champion bout between Ruiz and Hergovic. So it makes you wonder. But at the same time. You look at what the hell the WBC is doing with Earl, Earl Spence and, and Thurman and that 54 pounds and uh, WBC mandatory at 147, but not, not you know, checking the mandatory box, but not fighting for the title. It all, what this tells you, these sanctioning bodies do what they want, man. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, we'll see what's going to happen with Wilder. But for Ruiz, in my opinion, if he gets this fight with Hergovic, he turns up in good shape, which I know he will. Hergovic's in trouble. Simple. The man is not going to be able to avoid Andy Ruiz and them combination and them big, strong punches. He's just not going to be able to do it. Zhang is bigger, longer. He's much slower, but he's got a hell of power. And, and, and Zhang had, they should have stopped that fight because Hergovic was turning his back and everything, but it is what it is. But we'll find out if that was just a bad night in Saudi Arabia for Hergovic or if, look, he really shouldn't be up there with the elite fighters at heavyweight. So I ramble on just to say, look, Reason and Hergovic have been entered in a purse bid. But what I truly believe is happening, I think I talked myself into this, uh, is that Al Heyman doesn't want to put his two heavyweights he's trying to rebuild against each other. I don't think that I, that's what I think is happening. And you're seeing the politics happen behind the scenes with these key decision makers and sanctioning bodies. Now I'm gonna leave it as that. Y'all keep cool. Shout out to the veterans on seven continents. I'm in the breeze.